Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'm gonna be analyzing commitment of trader reports and trying to extract a signal that can be used for trading. So this will be a back test and shouldn't be used for real-time trading. I've been collecting these reports for the past 26 weeks and I have been told you can get historical data from third-party providers but the one I'm using comes directly from the source and I'm not sure how reliable third-party data is. And we're gonna start off by requiring these packages. We're gonna read in all my files and return a data frame. And we're gonna take a look at this data frame. The data is quite lengthy. We do have 129 columns, but for this back test, I'm just gonna be subsetting for the E-mini S&P. So back in our code here, we're gonna subset for E-mini S&P 500. And out of the 129 columns, I'm just interested in a few, which include the name of the futures contract, the date of the report, non-commercial and commercial long and short positions, along with the changes from the prior week. Now this is just purely preference, but I didn't like the naming convention for the columns as it makes it hard to work with. So in the following line, as you see, I renamed all of the columns. Now in order to make calculations, we need to change these four columns as these returned as character. So I'm just changing the column classes to numeric. Afterwards, I'm just gonna summarize the data by returning the net change from the prior week. So all we're doing is taking the long and short positions and calculating the percentage change from the prior week. And this is for open interest. So I'm gonna be adding two columns which take the average percentage change for both the long and short positions. So if we take a look at E-mini, we have our percentage changes for each of the non-commercial and commercial long and short positions from the prior week. And to summarize what these two columns are averaging are the long and short positions. So this first value is the average between the commercial long percentage from the prior week and the non-commercial long percentage from the prior week. Same thing for our average short column, which is just the average between the non-commercial and commercial short percentages from the prior week. Now from these two columns, I decided to make a trading signal. Now my trading logic was if the average long column was decreasing and the average short column was increasing. That told me that the market was losing interest to the upside and vice versa if the average short column was decreasing while at the same time the average long column was increasing. That told me that the traders were anticipating that this future contract would increase and so what I decided to do for this back test was take the opposite trade. So when traders were expecting a rally, I wanted to short. And when the traders were very pessimistic, I would decide to take a long trade. So as we see for this row, we have an increase in the average long positions from the prior week, while at the same time, a decline in the average short. So to me, traders were expecting a rally and I decided to take a short trade. And when the traders increased their positions in the shorts, while at the same time having a decline in the long positions, I would decide to take a long trade. So in order to add this signal column, we'll go back to our code and you can see the logic in this last three lines of code. Now, in order to do a back test, we need to change a couple of things. The first being the timestamp, since these reports get released every Friday. And as I understand it, they collect the data from Tuesday to Tuesday. So we need to shift our dates by three, which is when we actually get this report. And all I did for this prior line was just convert the table that I showed you into an XTS. And we're only interested in the average long, the average short, and the signal columns. We're gonna get data for the E-mini S&P, convert these to weekly bars, we're gonna start our weekly bars at the start of our COT XTS object, and finally just merge them together. So if we take a look at weekly ES, we have weekly bars for our futures contract and have merged our indicator along with it. So as you see, I'm missing two values for our indicator, but we're just gonna work with what we have. And in the back test, I'm just gonna subset all the instances where we have a signal. We're gonna hypothetically enter at the close of that weekly bar and hold it for the next week. And we'll see what type of returns we have in the last block of our code. So for the returns table, as I mentioned, we're just gonna subset all the instances where the signal was not zero. And for each of those instances, we're gonna get the next week. And I'm interested in returning a couple of values, which include the drawdown, the high watermark, along with the entry date, the exit date, the direction of our trade, the entry price, the exit price, and the number of futures points in case you wanna back test different futures contracts. So we're just interested in the points as percentages are not really relevant for futures contracts. So it'll iterate for each of our signals and return a data frame with the trade results. And if we take a look at that table, we have five instances in 26 weeks. Here we see the direction. So a negative one means we're shorting and a positive one means we're long. So if we were to hold from Friday to Friday for each of these instances, we would get the futures points which are all positive but one. And this is the point gain from trading one lot. 
So you would have to multiply these last three columns by the point value of your futures contract to get the dollar amounts. But as we see, the futures points seem fairly attractive and two of these drawdowns seem fairly scary, but it looks like we can get out during the week for a nice gain. But again, we would need more data to validate this thesis as we only have half a year and just a handful of signals. So again, this is not trading advice. I just wanted to see if there's a possibility to use this report to extract some trades. Well, with that guys, this concludes the video. I'll leave a link down in the description area to my Patreon where you can find this script. Please consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't done so already. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.